What is going on guys? So today is going to be something a little bit different. Uh, Indy, stop that. I actually don't know what we're doing today, but you guys probably know by the title. So the options today are we're going to get another male bristle nose. Somebody put it up for free. Um, unfortunately, we need females. And last time we started uh, breeding tanks of bristle nose, it was impossible to find males. Um, now we have like eight or nine males, but we have not many females. So, um, today's video, we're gonna go get that. I'll see whether or not I want to play with the fish tanks inside or if I want to come out here and attack the crack on the pond because fortunately the other day my plastic welder came but for now me and little Miss Indy here my little helper because her brother because <laughs> her brother's going to an appointment uh, or her, her brother and mum are going to an appointment and we are going where are we going? We are going to, we are going, we are going to, no, somewhere. Come here. We are going to get a fish. <laughs> yeah, Alright, so let's go grab this fish and uh, then we'll come back and figure out what we're doing today. Alright, so we got the fish. Uh, it is in the bag. Uh, we're just floating the bag at the moment, which isn't super important in this case because uh, when I got to the house, they had put it out the front. Um, they're trying to do contactless uh, exchanges, so the water is fairly cold anyway. So, um, yeah, but I mean, it's always best to do it. Also, there is a bristle nose right here. Now, when I was given that bristle nose, it looked incredibly terrible. Excuse the mess in this tank, it needs a bit of a clean. This one here was almost un identifiable. It looked like an L number because of its skin uh, looked slightly different. Uh, we couldn't identify it, but no, it turned out to just be a bristle nose. And um, yeah, so that, that's pretty cool. Uh, they're the um, lemon bristle nose that I got up there. Uh, we sold a few of the adults a while ago, and then recently I think we lost two of them. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna start figuring out what we want to do with this setup. There's a free tank down there um, and the two end tanks aren't in there. They're in our spare room. So we might put two tanks there and sort out these tanks a little bit and maybe do a comparison on breeding caves. So three tanks, three trios or maybe two females, two males. I don't know what I want to do. Um, we'll work out and then uh, the big tank full of them. Uh, that tank there has just got a gold spot pleco in it so we can move him into any tank that we want to and um, cut out these back, cut out these things here just to give that little bit extra room. But I don't think that is what this video today is going to be about today. I think we're gonna try and figure out a way to uh, cut up some plastic lids. Now you ask, why are you cutting up plastic lids? As you guys might have seen with the ponds out the front, I need to make some material to weld that shut. Now, this is HDPE, high density polyethylene. Poly, polyethylene, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna look like such an idiot if I've said all of this wrong. This is a pond that I made the other day, which is also made out of the exact same stuff that this is made out of. How you can tell that it is HDP is the, oh, let me see if we can get this, is the little two in this triangle just here, the little recycle symbol, which is the three arrows, let me adjust that, the three arrows are going in a clockwise direction. I don't even know if the clockwise direction means anything. But the recycling symbol had a little two in it, and that is the number. I, I was, yes, I don't know. We'll just say that is the number that you identify uh, HDPE with. Now, I haven't found a number on this yet. I haven't found uh, the material that it is made out of. 
But I'm just going to assume it is food grade and this is HDPE. Because the reason why they use HDPE is uh, its ability to not have stuff stick to it. So diseases and uh, all kinds of other stuff. It's quite a slippery plastic. That's why they use it for a lot of things to do with food. Now, the idea of this would be to make up some sort of like little welding rod or something and uh, notch out this and weld that together. So the other day it arrived, this is the little plastic welding, uh, or well, I wouldn't say welding, but stitching tool. Um, so we're gonna use a combination of this and a combination of what I originally wanted to try before. Um, hopefully it's not overkill uh, and the stitching works well. So for an example, I will show you, this guy here is, this is one of the uh, things that you can get with it. Um, it's a, like a wiggly snake and then it heats up, you press it in and it melts into it. Now, we wanna do that, but across the bottom here, we have to stop it from traveling any further. So we need to put something here to stop it and another one up here to stop it. Then we need to grind out all in here um, just because where they have tried welding it before, they didn't do a very good job and they left some holes uh, through there. Are you right, Indy? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> you could have stopped weighing. So yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to take some material out of that and um, fix it up. And then we're gonna transfer the water from that pond into this pond, and that way we're not wasting any water and slowly use that water from the grass. So I've actually got to cut these with scissors. Um, I did try using this sort of a blender and uh, it made lots of fine parts and lots of loud noises. So I'm gonna cut them all into quarters, uh, cut the lids into smaller pieces, then run it through the blender and see if that works. If not, we might just see how we go cutting them into small pieces by hand, which will take a while, which leads me to believe that in the future, we will have to make a plastic shredder and the plastic shredder will help us uh, drop our recycling quite a bit because then we can recycle from home. Um, and then maybe look at making a few other things with it and yeah, in the future, I, well, a while ago I had an idea that I would make a few um, bowls and stuff like that. That I'd make some bowls out of recycled plastic and stuff like that and um, I think we might actually have to do it, so <sighs> I'll see how I go cutting this up and see whether or not we do it tonight or we can finish the rest of this tomorrow, but um, if we do get through this tonight, cut them up quite fine, we will melt some in the oven. Hopefully I can calm my missus into believing that there is absolutely nothing wrong with sticking plastic in the oven. So. We'll see how we go. Indy, what's going to happen to the lids if we put them in the oven? They're cupcakes. They, they will turn to cupcakes. You think they're going to turn into cupcakes? Yeah. Anyway, if they were going to turn into cupcakes, would that actually be a bad thing? Uh, yeah. If we eat them? You wouldn't eat the plastic cupcakes if they turn into cupcakes. That will <laughs> so Indy's great concern about putting the uh, lids in the oven is not the house burning down, is that she doesn't want them to turn into cupcakes. So um, yeah, maybe that's what we'll call the video, not making cupcakes. <laughs> Alright, we'll see you guys in a second. I almost forgot before I started that I should probably do this before I completely forget that he's in there. I also don't know how long he was in that bag previously. He should be fine for quite a while. Uh, they're not very uh, big air intakers and they can slow down their body quite a bit. 
Um, yeah, he's going to temporarily go into this one and then we're going to divide up the bristle nose into a few different tanks and uh, have a crack at breeding them again. In my previous uh, breeding experiences, I've been quite successful with bristle nose and um, ugh. We'll, we'll see how we go this time. So I did mention that I was going to back off uh, a lot of the other fish and then just move to having one sort of fish because only having the eight little tanks here isn't quite enough to have uh, a big cichlid breeding set up. Um, I, I, although a lot of people do it uh, just because I have got so much other stuff going on at the moment um, in these tanks, probably not ideal for me. Um, but yeah, uh, there's the uh, gold spot pleco just there. Boop. So we're gonna have to find him a decent size home soon. Um, I don't know what the plan with that guy is. Uh, I just kind of brought him, well I swapped him for some other fish, so um, yeah. All right, let's release this guy and then we will go and sort out the plastics. Now that they are in smaller pieces, uh, I'm basically gonna sit here until I uh, either get what I want or I cook the blender. Surprise, surprise, the blender was a complete fail. So we're just going to uh, cut it up as best as we can um, by hand turn it into little ish pieces and then see if we can melt it and see if that works. If not, well, whatever. I've chopped it up to the best of my chopping abilities and uh, my attention span um, because I am completely over cutting metal. Uh, metal, Jesus. Actually, could I? Nah, all right, we won't do that. Um, I'm going to... Do, 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 do. I'm seriously going to have to look at getting a plastic shredder. It's something that I've wanted to do for an incredibly long time. And um, I found another lid. Maybe we'll cut this lid up and then we'll be done. Um, it's something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. And recycling plastic uh, firsthand is pretty cool. Um, you can make it into all sorts of stuff. So, um, yeah. Maybe it's something that we'll look into. This is mainly because I need some of this to mix with my pond so I can patch up the leak in it. Hopefully that's how it works. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I don't know, we'll figure it out. All right, let's uh, chop this up and then put that in the oven. I actually just counted it. It takes about 20 seconds to cut up a bottle cap into fairly small pieces, like maybe a little bit smaller than that because I didn't cut that one very well. Sorry about the rubbish. There is rubbish there, my bad. I'm probably gonna get yelled at for that, but anyway, we are going to put it in the oven. Now, it is going in the oven with uh, baking paper on it at 200 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. And um, we'll keep an eye on it and see how we go. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. So, um, yeah, wish me luck. Excuse the noise in the background. Indy's watching a movie. So, um... I looked into it and I freaked out because it looks like it's burnt from here, but it's actually already melting, which is absolutely bonkers because I thought it would take way longer to melt than this. So um, I guess that's a good sign. I have turned my oven down just in case the readings are wrong. Um, I don't want to completely burn it, but it has been in there for about four and a half minutes. So. Um, it's it's working. I think I think we're okay. So one of the biggest things of HDPE that you guys will be very familiar with is um, milk bottles. Milk cartons are made out of HDPE. It says it right there on the bottom of this container, and they all go into recycling and sometimes they get recycled, sometimes they don't get recycled. There is, I don't know how much percentage of waste actually gets recycled and it costs quite a bit to recycle. So seeing it firsthand and being able to do something at home 
would be incredibly cool. Now I should probably mention before I continue this video and get screamed at even more for showing the rubbish that was there. Uh, that is my fault. I filled the rubbish with animal stuff and some of the stuff from the backyard and there was nowhere to put that rubbish so I had to go sort that out before I put that rubbish away. So I'm sorry about the mess that was there before. Um, and our recycling bin is full which is one of the other reasons why I want to do this. So this is looking like one big goobly messy puddle. That is so freaking cool. It barely smells and there's no smoke coming out of it or anything so it's apparently it's quite safe to do in the house but I wouldn't get in the habit of doing it all the time in the house just in case because there is always a risk when doing things like this. Okie dokie! So I really hope the microphone's recording right now because we are going to pull it out. Alright Indy you're going to stay over there? And then we are going to pull it out, have a look at this giant puddle of googly mess. Uh, I can already see a problem. Well, it's not a huge problem, just a little problem. So, there is some lighter blue plastic bits in there. Oh, that is quite squishy, but very cool. Now, do not touch this as it comes out of the oven. It's incredibly hot. Um, I was a welder for a very long time and my hands are com dead. They have no soul. So there is these blue bits here. You can see, oh god, something stuck in my finger. Um, Indy, you can't sing that song. This video is going to get copyrighted. Stop singing. <laughs> Home. So yeah, this is it. This is really cool. Uh, uh oh, some of it came off the paper. Um, yeah. We've got to get this out again. I put it back in because I didn't want it to go hard and connect to the plastic anymore. Um, like I said before, Are we putting wear gloves. Alright, stand back please. We need gloves. Because this stuff gets very, very, very hot and very, very, very sticky. I think this might actually be a little bit too hot to pull it off the paper at the moment. So I might let it cool down. There is a little rip here where it's stuck to the paper. And I did use the right side, but unfortunately... It didn't really work. It's still a little bit stuck. So... We might let this cool down a bit and keep trying to pull it off. We'll see if we can get it to work. Unfortunately, that was a complete fail because it is completely stuck to the baking paper. So I'm a bit bummed about that. Uh, I thought maybe it would just be a little bit harder to get off the baking paper without the uh, silicon spray. But we don't have any, so we may have to postpone this video for a little bit. Unfortunately, our first attempt was a fail, but we have lids. Also, unfortunately for that, I've got to go through these lids and sort out which ones are HDPE, which ones are others, separate them into colours. So I think uh, I might do that now. I'll see whether or not we have any time to continue this video tonight. Otherwise, I might try melt a little bit tonight um, because I actually did go, I ran off to Bunnings and I grabbed some uh, silicon spray, which will hopefully allow it not to stick. Now, this is it. That That's what I melted. Um, that paper literally became one with it so I personally think it would have been better just to stick it to the actual tray and not even use that but um whatever and also listen to this like oh I can't this is thin that's not very thick and it is look oh now, do you hear that crack? That is it there. Now, there is a few little imperfections uh, when you check through it. 
This has literally just been melted and squished itself together through falling into the cracks. Um, I now understand why people like doing this and why, why it is so usable. Because this is actually cool. Unfortunately, I completely destroyed this with the paper. Um, I don't really want to try and burn the paper off of it because it'll just burn the plastic and I don't think there is any way to separate that. Um, yeah, unfortunately there's nothing that we can do for that that I know of, but that's my that's where my limits end. Um, so, we're going to sort through it, try and, uh, try and make it a little bit better, and then eventually make some moulds for this. Because I've heard once you put it under pressure, it works a whole lot better if you push a lot of it into it it'll push out all of the uh, holes in it all the air in it and um, there won't be any weaknesses which would mean snapping it even though breaking the oven even though th this is already incredibly hard to melt um, well, Jesus incredibly hard to break already imagine if there was no imperfections in it if there was no joins that you can clearly see here there's a few holes just here um, this stuff, I'm surprised, like I'm, I'm a little bit bummed that I didn't do this earlier. So I'm going to sort through these lids and I'll see you guys probably tomorrow.